Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing L is for Lawless, written by Sue Grafton. It's another book in the Alphabet Murder series. This is a really good book, and I'm glad it is because K is for Killer wasn't that great. And I'm glad that K is for Killer just seemed like a temporary blip in this series. This book just feels like so many different things. It feels like a road trip book, a really crazy road trip book, also, it feels like a Western gunslinger at times as well. There's so many different things going on in this book. And in some ways, it just feels a bit madcap at different times as well with some of the characters. So I think it's such a different book in feel to the previous book in the series as well. That's a good thing because the previous book in the series went into dark territory, very dark territory for this series. And this book just really just rips it out of that feeling and just... It's just a really fun and really enjoyable read. Kinsey is on a week holiday. She's enjoying it because coming up soon is Rosie and William's wedding. And she's taking time off to help prepare for that wedding. She's giving everybody a hand. But she's just loving the fact she's got some time off. That is until Henry, her landlord, asks her for a favour. And the favour is that someone just on their street, their grandfather died recently. And they think the grandfather was in a war. And they're hoping they can get some funding for the funeral. You know, can they get him buried through the veterans agency or something and pay for part of the funeral? But they're having trouble proving that he was in the war. They've been applying for his information. Was he there? Applying for details. But they keep getting denied. They keep getting told that they can't find any evidence that this guy was in the war. Kinsey decides to help out. She agrees too. And soon after that, she really regrets it. Because as she's there searching through the old guy's bungalow, some other guy turns up and he says he was a friend of this guy that died. This guy seems a bit dodgy. His name's Ray. He seems a bit dodgy. And Kinsey's not sure if he's telling the truth. And the story that he gives about how he knew the guy that died doesn't feel right as well. Something off about that. So Kinsey's saying to doubt everybody's story at the moment. So she puts it out of her mind, though, because she can't find any evidence to help anybody prove that the dead guy was in the war. So just, she goes home thinking it's all over. Soon after she gives up any hope of helping them, they ask her back. The dead guy's grandson was poking around in the bungalow, and they found a hidden safe behind a wall. Part of the wall came up and opened, and there's a safe there. They get the safe out. The only thing in the safe is an old iron key, which is very mysterious. And this got me hooked into the story because I kind of love that in stories. I love when they find these kind of clues to something else and they're trying to work it out, you know, codes and maps. And in this case, this old key. And I just love that. I'm wondering, what's that old key for? You think it has to be something old because it's just an old, described as a very old iron key in its shape. And it, and it weight and everything about it. So whatever it opens has to be old as well. And I want to know what that was. And so does Kinsey. Soon after they find the key, there's a burglary at the house. At the main house as well, not just the bungalow. Burglars take something that was hidden in another hidden alcove under the sink in this house. So this dead guy's been hiding things all over his house in, in hidden caches, in walls, Everywhere, it seems. They don't know what was there. It was something that looked a bit large because it was a quite large space in the wall. So they're not sure who took it. Kinsey wonders if it was Ray, you know, the, the guy who was there asking about the dead guy. But it can't have been him because they find him quite badly beaten up. And he says it was somebody else, a third person. So now we've got more people into the mix. And this person... Sounds a bit crazy, the person that actually was the burglar. Kinsey finds out where this guy went to, so she goes to try to find out anything else about him. And she's, she's interested now, she's invested. She's not being paid to do this, but she's invested in the whole thing. When she gets there, she sees this third guy and another person, a woman, leaving a property and getting in a car and carrying a duffel bag. Now, immediately she thinks, that bag's got something that was stolen from the house. So she starts tailing them. She wants to know where they're going. 
and end up going to an airport. At the airport, Kinsey follows them, finds out what flight they're going on, finds out that only the woman's going on the flight, not the guy, but she books a ticket on a whim to get on the plane and follow this woman wherever she's going. She doesn't know where she's going to go and follow them because she wants to know what's in that bag. And, you know, that seems a bit crazy for Kinsey. It's not in her character to do things like this on a whim, especially given that she's usually quite tight for money and she's not guaranteed that anyone's going to pay her for her services on this case while she's investigating this because it's not a real case for her. There's no contract that's been signed. There's no guarantee that she's going to get anything out of this other than debt. But she wants to find out what it is. It's piqued her interest and she's honed in on this and it seems a strange way for her to spend her holiday. The story just really picks up in pace and energy. I'm not going to explain everything because if I did, it'd spoil the read for you because I think this book is wonderful and deserves to be read. To say that this becomes a bit madcap from now on in some ways, not in every scene, just in some things, and just seems that Kinsey can't catch a break. From the very start of this book, when she agrees to help try to prove that this dead guy was in the army, every decision that she makes just seems like a bad decision. She thinks she's making a good choice, helping somebody, but every choice she makes turns out wrong. And it just throws her more and more into this crazy whirlwind of activity going on with all these different people involved and everybody else that's involved in this story is untrustworthy, crazy, just madcap and just Kinsey just wonders how she got mixed up with all these people. But this story is a wild ride and I really enjoyed reading it. As I said before, it's part road trip, part western gunslinger, just part craziness. There's so much stuff going on in this story, part treasure hunt as well, because they're trying to find this treasure, because everything is about some robbery that happened many years ago in the past, and there meant to be bags of money or jewels or something that's hidden somewhere, and maybe that's what their key is meant to find. And I just love every aspect of this story, because you didn't know from one chapter to the next what's going to happen next, and you didn't know if Kinsey was actually going to survive this whole thing unscathed because she's spending time with some pretty dangerous and crazy people, it seems, in this book. Ray. Now, Ray is the guy that turned up at the house saying he knew the dead guy. And his story about how he knew the dead guy just didn't seem honest from the start. And Kinsey was sure of that. And sure enough, we learn some more things about Ray as time goes on in this story. I'm not going to say what. I'm just going to say that he's untrustworthy. He's dangerous in some ways. And even though he's not really likable, he's quite selfish. In some ways, he can be likable at certain times. He just feels like this character that has this sort certain um, charm in a way. But it's not really charming. It's got this kind of layabout, larrikin kind of feel to him. And Kinsey, I think, is taken in by that sometimes in the book. But in the back of her mind, you get the impression she's thinking, look, this guy is just a bit of a dropkick. Why am I trusting him? Why am I putting up with him? But she can't help herself, it seems. She wants to find out what's going to happen with this guy. You know, what's he going to do next? I think that's what keeps her on this case, keeps her interested in this story. Laura is the woman who was carrying the duffel bag on the plane, the one that Kinsey follows on a whim. She's just kooky and crazy as well. She's not likable. She's very selfish. She's quite dangerous as well in some parts. And there's really good interactions between Laura and Kinsey as the story goes on. And you just get to see how Laura thinks and where her mindset is. And it's not well-centered. She's not well-balanced in this story. She's a bit all over the place, and at times she thinks, feels like a bit of a threat to Kinsey, and at some times she feels like the main threat. That's quite interesting. She's very complex. I kind of like Laura as a character just for that kooky aspect. She seems very kooky, and she makes a good character in this book. Gilbert is the most dangerous of all the characters in this story. Now, here's the guy that was with Laura at the airport, and he took off as she got on the plane. 
but we meet Gilbert in different parts throughout this story. He is completely crazy and very dangerous, and he doesn't think twice about hurting people. He just wants the money at any cost. He doesn't like anybody getting in his way. But he's also very cocky and sure of himself, and at times, that's his worst enemy. So, in some aspects, he's a bit one-sided in this story, just being vicious and crazy and very dangerous. But then he has his other sides, where his vulnerability is his cockiness. And that's an interesting mix in this story. But he's another character that was well-crafted, I think, and it's about time we had another book with well-crafted characters because we had that blip with Kay's the Killer, the only blip in the series, I think, for well-crafted characters. But it just feels like that in a series with every book having such good characterizations, even one book is too much. I really enjoyed this book. Al is for Lawless brings this series back from the disaster of K is the Killer. I know I keep saying it, but it's really true. After the previous book, I was just wondering how long it would take for the series to get back up to the same standard as I want it to be. It only took one book. This book is a really fun read. It just feels like a totally different kind of thing going on than any other book in the series. And it was really fresh and enjoyable to see. I rate this a 4 out of 5. I think Sue Grafton created some great characters in this book. Created Kinsey in a totally different light. And even though we don't see much of Rosie, William and Henry in this story. It's a book where I didn't really mind that because the other characters filled in that niche for them. As I go through this series, I'll do a book review on each book and put that video up on my channel. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. There's also a Sue Grafton playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.